In this series, a filter 48 KZX Spectrum using an EEPROM instead of the infamous Ferranti Uncommitted Logic Array. What I've also done is change the raster generator to output the VGA signal instead of the normal PAL signal. And in this video, we're going to see how well the machine works. Just to quickly revise the machine's architecture, we have the Z80 CPU on the left, the main memory is in the middle, which consists of an EEPROM and a static RAM. The raster generator is on the right, which is a second EEPROM set up as a finite state machine. The Z80 and raster generator share the address and data buses going into the main memory. When CPU clock bar is high, the Z80 has access. And when it's low, the raster generator has access. The trick to getting all this to work is this octal D type flip flop, which makes the data going into the Z80 persist while CPU clock bar is low. In the last video, I made a keyboard which I used for testing and debugging. All the keys seem to work, and it runs this simple basic program. For longer term use, I put the machine in this transparent case, and the membrane rubber keys work too. That said, there are still a couple of issues. One, I'm getting a jail bar pattern on the display. This occurs in the original spectrum, they can be improved by changing the bypass capacitors on the dynamic RAM chips. Of course, this machine doesn't have any DRAM, so I suspect that at least part of the problem is due to the lack of a ground plane. If I built this on a printed circuit board, I'd use a four-layer board, and I'd dedicate one layer to power and one layer to ground. But obviously, I can't do that with point-to-point -point wiring. Every chip has a decoupling capacitor, and I've spaced out some electrolytic capacitors around the board. I've tried different power supplies, but none of these tricks fixed it. I've been pretty careful to make sure there are no ground loops. Generally, I wire up the power rail and the ground rail to be a tree, so that for any given signal, there should be only one pathway for ground return. The trail bars take away from the aesthetic of the display, and I have a few tricks up my sleeve, but I think I'll worry about it later. For now, I want to see if I can get some games to run. Second, I haven't connected up the flash bit in the attribute byte, but that should be pretty straightforward. Finally, I haven't connected up the speaker or the cassette tape interface. How am I going to download games? Well, I still have this strip header which is designed to interface directly to an Arduino Mega. But the Arduino Mega has a limited amount of memory. What I've done is build this interface board which has an Arduino Mega and a large EEPROM. Specifically, the 27C322. Every game is just a 64 kilobyte memory image of the Spectrum main memory. So this particular EEPROM, I can store 64 games. That should be enough for now. To download the game, I use the bus request and bus acknowledge signals on the Z80. The Arduino asserts bus request and then waits for the bus act to arrive. Then, it directly drives the Z80 address and data buses as well as all the other signals required to download the code into the static RAM. Alright, so the first game is Manic Miner. I got a copy of this game in .z80 file format. This is downloaded directly into the static RAM. There's a little bit of extra code to preload the Z80 registers with the correct values. It runs, but for some strange reason it keeps jumping at the start. When I finish the game and restart it, it seems to work okay. I just ignored the joystick settings in the .z80 file, so I suspect that that may have something to do with it. But I'll take this as a win for now. I'll just purposely get through this first game to fix the jumping problem. Alright, that's restarted and jumping's back to normal. I spent so many hours in my teenage years playing these 2D platform games. I'll speed it up here, but I'll continue playing to test it. In fact, I tested it for quite a few hours last night so that I could demonstrate it in this video here. The good news is that I haven't seen the machine crash yet. I was worried about the memory sharing technique and whether the Octal D-type flip-flop would keep the Z80 happy while the raster generator is accessing main memory. It looks good in theory, but as the old saying goes, 
in theory. Theory and practice are the same, but in practice, they never are. That certainly seems to be the case for most homebrew projects, but I seem to have gotten away with it here. I practiced up to this level last night, but I think my luck will run out soon. It's interesting. It's hard to see in this image, but there are jail bars in the border. However, in this high-intensity line here with air and the white bar, there are no jail bars at all. We know that the borders are a low-intensity area, and so from what I can tell, the jail bars are only occurring in the low-intensity area. Coming up next... Clive Sinclair, the man who brought you Jet Set in Willy. And it has exactly the same problem. Again, when I finish the first game and start a new game, the problem goes away, so I suspect the faulty state in software is overwritten. I'm not going to burn through all eight lives on camera, but it does act the same way as Manic Miner, which, I guess, isn't completely surprising given that both games were written by Matthew Smith. This is the opening screen for Jetpack, and this is really good. This looks better than a PAL image would look. Most of the screen's high intensity, so I don't see any jail bars. This image is taken directly from the screen with my iPhone, and it looks much better than it appears here. Here, rocket thrust and both left and right work, but I haven't really played this game before, so I'm not very good at it. Next, Agitech downloads and I can move around, but either I don't understand the navigation model or a key isn't working properly. I've tried all the keys before in the basic program, and they all seem to work, but if you know how to play Agitech, let me know in the comments. Bruce Lee is next. This just plain doesn't work. It downloads the title screen, but that's it. I don't know if it's waiting for a keyboard input. I'm not sure. Moving on, Dizzy doesn't seem to work either. Clearly it downloads this image into video memory, but I don't know if the Z80 is actually executing the code it's meant to. Next is head over heels. This does work, but it takes forever to reset the input values to operate from the keyboard. I'm not sure why it's not moving, so maybe it's not fully functional. School days seem to work, but again, I'm not sure how to play it. Here's a good example of what I've been talking about. We can see the jail bars in the dark yellow background, but they're completely missing from the light yellow region. The fact that the jail bars disappear in high intensity regions gives me a lot of confidence that I can solve this problem, but I think I'll save that for another video. I'm not sure what's going on with Bruce Lee and Dizzy. I might have a dud copy, or there might be something more complex going on. I'll have a look at them at a later stage. Now that this series is almost over, I've got something even more interesting in the pipeline, where I replaced the ULA and the Z80 with EEPROMs, Static RAM, and TTR Logic. Until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.